Court out at the PEC here at Coppin State University. Tom Harley joined me, the athletic director here at Coppin State, Taylor Corner in D.C. This is a big one today, and we talked about the women's program maybe turning a corner. This is the 84th meeting between these two clubs. 53-30, Eagles have the series advantage, but they have dropped four straight. Yeah, Morgan has had our number for a, a few a few years, and um, this is an opportunity for us to make make a statement for this season. So we were just visiting a moment ago about points per game at 29.1 a game for Kenley. That's uh, that's getting it done on a nightly basis. It's hard to average close to 30 points. And she's able to do that. I'm, I'm curious uh, to see him play. I haven't seen him play this year, of course, but uh, again, like I said earlier, that's what coaches get paid for, not only to, to figure out ways to score, but you have to figure out ways to defend. So with that in mind, starting lineups both ways. First for the visitors, it's going to be 5'11", junior guard out of Chicago, Illinois. That's Martez Cameron. He'll be flanked by Chester, Pennsylvania product Stanley Davis, Jr., a 6'4", sophomore. To Ann Kenley, 6'5", senior out of Harlem, New York, averaging nearly 30. 29.1, that's almost 30. Philip Carr, 6'9", senior out of Brooklyn, New York, is the four. Azaria Sykes, a 6'8", sophomore out of Richmond, Virginia, is the five. For Coppin State, under Juan Dixon, his first year at the helm here at Coppin State. It's graduate transfer out of Niagara University, Karan Davis, as the lead guard at 6'2". To Quain Drummond, 6'4", freshman out of Newport News, Virginia, is the two. 6'6", junior, Willing Grove, New Jersey product, Lamar Morgan, is the three. Yes, he is in the gym. He is in the Baltimore zip code. And no, he has not yet attempted a three-pointer today. However... We just mentioned he's in the zip code. There's a chance. Chad Andrews Fulton, 6'7", junior out of Philly, is the four. Cedric Council, junior, 6'8", junior out of Kennesaw, Georgia. He is the five. This should be a great one. Throw the records out. I know it's an old cliche, but especially between these two teams, just forget about it. And you saw it in the women's game. We had gauze in a nose. We had split lips, right? Right. Towels flying everywhere, bandages on the face. That's what rivalries are. I mean, come on. That's what rivalries are. The trainers earned it today. So it's Council and Carr to get it going. And it's going to be Cedric Council Jr. winning the opening tip-off. Coppin on radio goes left to right on TV. Well, it's opposite. Davis, top side left around the Andrews Fulton screen to the head of the key. Swings the top side of the right. Drummond goes baseline right, right to the rack off the window. A lot of contact, no call. He ends up on the floor. Cameron on the run back. Gave it up near side left, right to the rack with the right hand. And scoring is Stanley Davis Jr. And the Bears have a 2-0 lead. Token pressure by Cameron defending Davis. Davis down to the floor court. Lobs it high to Andrews Fulton. Andrews Fulton facing up. Going to his left, hands it off to Morgan, curls left to the lane. Bounce off to Andrews Fulton, he got bumped off. I like that we were trying to go inside early. Fouls on Kenley. That's his first. Give him another one, he'll be seated. Coach Todd Bozeman, coaching Morgan State. Davis on a ball screen handoff from Andrews Fulton. He and Sykes locked arms and really never let go. And that jumper is on the way and good to tie the game at two. That's good. It's important for uh, Karan Davis to get off to a good start. He's going to be a key player for this game. So now with 19.01 to go, here in the opening half, we have a video replay of the Davis attempt. And I believe right before that, they are 
double checking right before the attempt by Karan Davis to see if there was anything extracurricular going on. And they're double checking the number on the foul assessed on Kenley. And as they roll it back, they're sorting out the contact. 22 is left knee. Stuck his left knee out. And I don't think Kenley's going to be assessed as foul, DC. I think it's going to go the other way on Philip Carr, I believe. It's going to be close. Let's see. 20, 22. Yeah, so Kenley has his foul wiped away. It's on 6'9", senior Philip Carr. Corey Bob doing a nice job on a video replay. Our first of the day. All that contact in that women's game. Not one time they go to the monitor. <laughs> Not one time. Far side of the right. Davis Jr.'s got the handle for Morgan State. The game tied at two. A minute plus gone by here in the opening half. Fade away off the left wing, rim it off. Out of the hand to Kenley. Loose ball rebound, popped out top side right, Davis Jr. Now between the rings, Cameron. Cameron to his right, top side right now, Davis Jr. Bounce it off, weak side right of the lane, rim it off on that running attempt, and no good. It comes down to the hands of Andrew Fulton. Hands it off down to Drummond. Drummond back left to right. Top side left. Coming back around that Andrews Fulton screen toward the head of the key, 18 to shoot. Elbow, Drummond elbow. picks it up, now hands it off to Council Jr. Said facing up, that left side Davis thought about a three, backs it out with 10 to shoot. Coming right of the Andrews Fulton screen, turn around from 10, glass rim no, Council had it, lost it, deflected by Morgan State. Hey, 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 yo, yo. Substitution hey. will be David Syfax. He played a ton in this game last year. Syfax on the year, 18 games played, averaging 6.1 points a game. Davis on the catch, bounce back to Andrews Fulton, right side. Morgan wants a three at the horn and buries it. Lamar Morgan, you called it. He was in the zip code. But what it was was a great... Um, execution of the uh, of the play to give him the shot that he wanted. 5-2 Coppin with 17.58 to go in the opening half. And Todd Bozeman is lighting up the Bears right now, not closing out on the shooter at all. And that is a great look that Coppin is going to come back to time and time again. The great news is, D.C., that Lamar Morgan's three out of that corner, that's what we like to call that short corner. Sure. So he didn't get to use the time stripe or any of this 15, 20 feet area between the rings. He had to shoot it from he that corner. He had to shoot it, and again, they executed the play. It was a, a good three-point shot. You know, if you're going to shoot behind the arc, make them good shots, and that's what it was. Is that really Coach Dixon and the staff reining him in as a player to take a high percentage yeah, three? Yeah, yeah, because it's different kind of threes that you can take. And early in the year, you know, we were taking some threes that were ill-advised. So now Kenley's got it, swings it near side left to Cameron. Cameron curls in a lane, floats it up, left to the rim and off. Andrews Fulton the rebound, hands it off to Drummond. He'll run it back left to right. Guess who's calling for the ball, left wing behind the arc. Drummond uses the Andrews Fulton screen near side right to Karan Davis. Davis coming to his left. Lobs it down to Andrews Fulton, trying to back his way in on a smaller defender. Now Davis head of the key, spins to his right, nearly lost the handle. Ten to shoot. Hands it off high right, Andrews Fulton gave it back to Davis. That three goes wide left on an air ball and out of bounds. Never set his feet. I, I think he thought that the shot clock was a little lower than, than it was because he rushed that one. He had five seconds remaining. Inbounder is Carr. Cameron, another forecourt, right side, Davis Jr. Back to Carr, back to Cameron, near side left, try to dump it down to the doorstep to Syfax, deflected and stolen by Coppin State. 
They lead 5-2, three minutes in first half. Davis, near side of the right to Drummond. Drummond, right side now to Cedric Council. Council Jr. feeds it up to Morgan. Morgan sets his feet, wants a three, splashed it down, Lamar Morgan. It's now an 8-2 Coppin lead, 16-44 to go in the half. Great shot again. If he's in rhythm, it could be a big night for him, big afternoon for him. Davis Jr., back of the rim, no good from 10 feet away. Rebound to Coppin State. Here comes Davis with the handle, head of the key. Swings it inside. Andrews Fulton left of the lane. Glass and good. Chad Andrews Fulton. And it's a 10-2 Coppin lead. He held his arm up showing his muscle, and, and that's a good thing because he did he did finish strong. Camera ball screen handoff. Top side right to Davis Jr. Excuse me, Kenley coming to the head of the key. Defended by Drummond. Swings it. Far right corner. Penetration by Cameron. Fights it upside of the window. No good. Loose ball on the floor. Andrews Fulton, another loose ball takeaway. Uh, he, kept it. he went straight up on the defensive end. Forced a little guard to take a bad shot. Karan Davis on the march. Defended by Davis Jr. Again the high lob. Andrews Fulton trying to face up. Hands it off to Morgan. Comes to a screeching halt. Head of the key. Feeds it inside. Andrews Fulton is back in the basket. Turns right. Scores. And Andrews Fulton with four. Coppin a 10-point lead at 12-2. So far, great execution on, on the offense again. And we're playing tenacious defense. Far side right, Cameron. Now head of the key to Carr. He wants a jumper. Rim it off. Rebound Morgan. Looking for an outlet. Now for Davis. Caron on the run back. Head of the key. Left of the lane. Finds Morgan trailing the play. Hands it off to Andrews Fulton. And a timeout called, I believe, by Coppin State. It comes with 15-13 to go in the opening half and will serve as a media timeout with Coppin in front of Morgan. 12-2, back after a 60-second timeout on the Coppin State Sports Network. Jordan Hardwick checked in at the table here at the PEC, Coppin State University. Todd Bradley alongside the AD here at Coppin State, Derek Carter. Visit CoppinGear.com to get your CSU apparel. It's where the home team shops. And indeed, the home team up 12-2 with 15-13 to go here in the opening half. And DC, you and Todd Bozeman, and, and Bozeman's been around basketball as long as I can remember. And... The two of you go back many, many years. We do. Uh, actually, my roommate from college uh, was best friends with Todd, and we've just been friends since our high school days. He went to rivalry high school in McNamara, and of course, I was at the map, and they could never beat us in anything. So, and I'm sure you remind. I tell, I tell him all the time. Just checking. Yeah. Davis with the head of the key, picked up the bounce, dump it to the doorstep, and send with a two-hand finish. That? How about that? 14-2 Eagles. That's a great job of coming out of the timeout. Cameron Davis Jr. Right side handle. Now head of the key to Cameron. Your side left to Kenley. Kenley goes left to the lane and he got bumped off. We await the official's call as Coach Dixon having a conversation with the official. Little hand check call. It's on Lamar Morgan. That's his first. You have to expect Morgan 
to go to Kenley. Cameron on the catch, left corner. Three ball for Kenley, comes rim it off. And Davis with the rebound and run out, got knocked to the floor. That foul is on Cameron, that's his first. Now, we're five and a half minutes into this game with 14.32 to go opening half. Coppin's got a 14-2 lead. Uh, if you and Coach Bozeman go back that far, I'm sure you've had the conversations between the two of you about runs in basketball. And you know they're coming. You know they're coming. We're, we're up by 12 points now, but guaranteed that we're going to have to weather a storm. Oslander checked in and tried to use a Hardwick screen, and Jordan called for the moving screen. It's amazing how frequently they're calling that this year. Those, those big guys are out in space and trying to set that screen, and they're moving. Cameron with the handle through the jump circle. Far side of the right, gave it up to McCray Pace, who checked in for Morgan State, facing up his car. Left side pull-up is on the way, rim it off for Cameron. Offensive rebound and follow, glass and good for Morgan State, and I believe McCray Pace make it 14-4, Coppin. Oslander the handle, nearly lost it. Dribbles right side behind the arc, bouncing out weak side of the right. Back to the top now, Arc. Gave it up to Drummond. Drummond top side left. Council left elbow. Ten to shoot. Gave it back right side. Oslanders. Three ball. Rim it off. Rebound to McCray Pace. Leaves it for a trailing Kenley. He wants a deep three. Rim it off to Morgan. Nearly poked free. Coppin's got numbers the other way. And they'll pull it with Drummond. He'll march it left to right. Elijah Staley's also in there as a big for Morgan State. He is defending Cedric Council authoritatively. Head of the key, Morgan, thought about a three. Takes it off the bounce, left of the lane. Council going left. Rim, no. And on the floor is Staley. I think they knock knees. Right side, pull up from three. Back of the rim, no, from a great pace. And the outlet, Morgan to Drummond, was thrown into the near sideline. You know, the little things when, when Davis is not on the floor, and uh, Drummond's running, running the point. You see the little things of, of timing and uh, unforced turnover. Here comes Davis now. He and Andrews Fulton check back in. Staley's going to exit for Morgan. Sykes is back on to replace him. Syfax is back to get Philip Carr. And Lucian Brownlee's checking in for the first time as Morgan will check out. Inbounder is McCray Pace. Now head of the key for Kenley. Kick out left corner. McCray Pace coming to his right. Feeds it off to the center of the lane to Cameron. He'll back it out, 20 to shoot. Swings it back top side of the right now to Kenley. Kenley, a floater blocked by Andrews Fulton. Got his own miss back, tried to throw it in traffic. Loose ball picked off by Hardwick, and here come the Eagles. Davis into the forecourt, hesitation dribble, backs it out, head of the key. Trying to use that Hardwick screen one more time, D.C., and a whistle and a foul against Morgan State. It's on Syfax, that's his first. I like the flow of our offense with Davis taking the lead. I realize he has to get a rest every now and then, but I like the flow. Brownlee will inbound from the sideline with 12.26 to go opening half. Coppin leading Morgan 14-4. Brownlee out of the right corner. He had Hardwick wide open on a pick and roll. Hands it off out of Andrews Fulton. Top side left to Davis. 10 to shoot. Karan the handle. Going left elbow. Pulls up. Back of the rim. No good. And the rebound tracked down in the corner by Sykes. Now for Cameron. Syfax, right block. Head of the key now for Sykes. Gave it up near side left. But great pace. Swings it right corner. Syfax for three. Rim it off. Rebound Oslander. Looking for an outlet. Now he'll keep it himself. Good rebound. Oslander runs left to the lane. Dumps it off for Andrew Spolton. He thought he was fouled. Outlet down the floor for Kenley. And he'll rock it with two hands. 14-6 Coppin State. We, we, gotta, we have to keep him quiet 
So therefore, we can't get turnovers to give him an easy, easy dunk for a layup. You could argue it's a dead ball situation with 11.38 to go. However, the ball rolled free, so the officials play on. Brownlee will come left to right across the time stripe, defended by McCray Pace. Swings it high left. And coming left to right with it is Hardwick. Reversing off that Andrews Fulton. Ball screen handoff to Davis. Davis, step back off the right wing, is on the way. Good. Karan Davis now with four points. Makes it a 16-6 Conference State lead. Closing in at 11 minutes to go here in the opening half. Cameron, top side of the right. Now to Syfax. Top side left, Warmer Cray Pace. Left corner kick out, and we've got a whistle and what? Lucian Brownlee with his first. 10.59 to go here in the opening half. Shot clock goes to 20. Morgan State will have the basketball. We come back after a timeout. 16-6, Coppin State leads Morgan State back after a 60-second timeout of the Coppin State Sports Network. Ten fifty nine to go in the opening half. Coppin leads Morgan 16-6. Tom Bartley joined by the athletic director here at Coppin State. Derek Carter, who was officially named the men's basketball broadcast analyst. <laughs> A lot of people still think that's very comical. Double overtime win over <laughs> FAMU is not funny. That's the first win in Juan Dixon's career here at Coppin State. It's big is. time right there. And, and, and that's why he's holding me. There he goes. Ken Lee with a three. Give him five and make it 16-9. Hopefully that's his last three of the day. Comes in averaging 29. He's got five in the first nine and a half minutes. Morgan checked in out of the timeout. It's now Davis head of the key. Coming left to the Andrews Fulton screen. Now coming back to his right. And it's a moving screen on Chad Andrews Fulton. Apparently they didn't see the Davis Jr. elbow to the teeth. Trying to fight through the screen. Yeah, that, again, they're calling that so often this year. I, I've noticed it just in college basketball in general. So many people are trying to set these high ball screens. So DC, how long do they have to stay planted? As the pull-up is good yeah, they, by they, Phil Carr. They don't expect your feet to move at all. And a lot of times, you, you know, you're trying to adjust yourself for the screen. So Morgan, once trailed by 12 at 14-2. They've ripped off a 9-2 run of their own. They trail now by 5 to the doorstep. And that is going to be last touch by Morgan out of bounds on the attempt by Lamar Morgan. That comes with 9.55 to go in the opening half. Davis to inbound from the baseline. Now we have a conversation between two of the three officials. That's been sorted out, whatever the conversation was. And now the third official that wasn't in the original conversation now <laughs> joins the party and has been informed of what that was about. He didn't want to be left out, I see. Exactly. Davis on the lob in now to Andrews Fulton. Ball screen handoff back to Davis. Gave it up to Morgan. Morgan gave it back to Davis, head of the key. Swings it right side to Brownlee. Brownlee behind the arc, now coming to his left. And 
we're going to get an offensive foul or a block. An offensive foul on Lucian Brownlee. That is his second. <laughs> Drummond was sent to the scores table. And Juan Dixon sent him right back to the table. And he said, wait a minute, he's got two fouls. He's got to check him in. And indeed, that's what's going to happen. Next dead ball. Right side, Davis Jr. And it's a moving screen, I believe, on Carr. That's his second. Yeah, everybody's finding that a tough, tough to set those screens. Big guys aren't, aren't comfortable out in space like that. Oslander on the inbound now for Davis. 16-11, Coppin leading Morgan. 9.25 to go, first half. Lob left, Andrews Fulton. Facing up, a ball screen hand off that of Morgan. He wanted that three, tried to lob it inside to Andrews Fulton, poked away and stolen. On the run back, Kenley going strong. Glass rim, no tap, follow, could have been goaltending or basket interference. Davis will run it out and score with the right hand. Aran's got six, 18-11 the lead for Coppin State. Saved in by Morgan, kicked out right side. Davis Jr. comes right of the lane. Swings it back top side of the right now to Cameron. In between the ring, Syfax hands it off left side, Kenley. Kenley left to the jump circle, defended by Drummond. Kenley wants a screen, seven to shoot. And a five count called on Kenley. He was trying to be so strategic in setting up the screen. May have been a quick count on the fives, but Sometimes things work your way. That seemed odd to you? It was a little odd. It certainly was. 8.35 and counting. Opening half, 18-11. Top and leading Morgan. Far side left Davis. Left corner Drummond. Drummond lobs it off to Chad Andrews Fulton. He looked back door, hands off to Drummond on the curl. Feeds it high to Andrews Fulton, and that's blocked out of bounds from behind with 13 to shoot. Great pace checks back in. Syfax will exit. Baseline inbound now for Karan Davis. Lobs it into Andrews Fulton. Goes right of the lane and a blocking foul called on Morgan State. Great pace with his first. I don't think Morgan expected. Andrews Fulton to put the ball on the floor that aggressively. Look at this mismatch. Look at it. Davis to Andrews Fulton facing up on Cameron. Back in his way into the near block. Kicked it back out. Oslander for three. Front of the rim, no. And then Andrews Fulton going for the rebound. Commits his second. That gets shed to the scorer's table. He'll replace Chad Andrews Fulton in the Coppin State lineup with 8-11 to go. Here in the opening half, 18-11, Coppin leading Morgan. Cameron with it, top side right. Bounce it off to Kenley. Your side left, Sykes gave it up. Davis Jr. wants a three. Rim it off, rebounds, Edward Council Jr. Now for Karan Davis. Outlet down the floor to Morgan, a power bounce left in the lane, and he got caught in traffic and was fouled. The foul is on Sykes. That's his first. It brings us to the under-8 media timeout, which comes at 7.54 to go opening half. Coppin State 18, Morgan State 11. Back with more of the Battle of Baltimore after this 60-second time on the Coppin State Sports Network.
That court's out at the PEC here at Coppin State University. Tom Bradley joined me, the athletic director and men's basketball analyst, Derek Carter in D.C. We look at this rebounding arc, and it needs to stay this way for Coppin to be successful today. They're out-rebounding Morgan State 11-3 on the defensive glass. That's true. That's true. And, and our shooting percentages are pretty good, too. Two of five from three? Yeah. And eight of 16 from the right. floor? We'll take that. Neither team, with 7.54 to go in the half, knock on wood, has attempted a free throw. However, we're on the verge. Each team with 16 fouls. Oh, by the way, Morgan steps in at the free throw line. We're just checking boxes today during this broadcast. Morgan puts the front end on the way. Ram it. Spills off. They'll have another to try to build this lead back to eight. Largest lead of the half either way has been 12 at 14-2. Top of state. Second one's good. Morgan now with seven. 19-11. Top of state. Cameron between the rings. Coming near side left. Reverse it off. Now for Davis Jr. Right side. Penetration move by McCray. Pace gave it back for a teardrop. And that's good. Davis Jr. now with four. Makes it a 19-13 cop and lead. See Morgan's push picking up the defensive tempo a little bit here. Davis defended by Cameron. Dribbles the top side of the right. Shot clock to 15. Davis, crossover dribble, fadeaway jumper, rim, glass, good, Karan Davis. 21-13. He just did that like you used to do it. <laughs> Coming left to right, Cameron, fadeaway in the lane, that's good. Cameron's on the board to make it 21-15. Coppin, and the pace of play has now picked up. I was going to say, up. both squads are heating up a little bit. Davis, high left lob. Said trying to back his way in, turned right ahead of the key, nearly lost the handle, and Davis, trying to save it in, could not. So now with a three, Morgan can cut this to a one-possession lead. Cameron on the bounce, now to the floor court. Ball screen handoff to Kenley. Kenley. Hands off on a ball screen back to Davis Jr. Line, lane, fights one of the right hand. Rim, it trickles off. Battle for the rebound, and we got a whistle, and what? So Morgan, that's his second. That gets Lucian Brownlee back to the scorer's table. He's got two fouls as well. Davis Jr. with four points in this game. Stands in at the free throw line. And knocks down the front end. 21-16. Coppin State by five. Free throws on the way, and it rattles home. Davis Jr. now with six. Makes it 21-17. Coppin State by four. Deron Davis, the handle into the forecourt. Top side right as we close in on the six-minute mark of the opening half. Brownlee on the catch. Left side behind the arc. Near side right. Drummond tried to get it to the right corner to Davis. It was knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Davis Jr. 15 to shoot. Drummond from the sideline to inbound. Looking. Gets it in now to Davis. Karan facing up on Cameron. Takes him left of the jump circle. Now coming back to his right to the head of the key. Nine. Down to eight. Fade away off that right side. Good again. Karan Davis now with ten. The lead BC back to six at 23-17. Cameron an answer. Back of the rim. No good. Set pulls down the rebound. He's got numbers the other way. Davis on the run back left to right. Bounce it. Far side left. Brownlee tried to face up and now backs it out. 
Good initial look, but it was cut off, and now what do we have? Oh, he called a palming the ball, carrying the ball. Well, that, and said uniform is now torn above the coppin. Rivalry play. I mean, the first game we had gauze, bandages, ice. Now we have torn jerseys in the men's game. The question is, do we have a replacement? Rim and off. Rebound to Council. Rip jersey and all. I say leave it that way. I mean, that's a great souvenir for somebody right there. Frame that thing up. Council Jr. has it. Head of the key going to his left. Now coming back to his right. Ball screen hand off to Brownlee. Step back three is on the way. High off the rim, no. Set battle for the rebound. Oh. Tried to corral it and couldn't. That comes with 5.04 to go. In the opening half, complimenting Morgan, 23-17. You'd like to see us really finish this half strong and... and go into the halftime break with a, a decisive lead. Davis Jr. hands it off. Now to Kenley. Kenley coming left to the lane. Fights one of the right hand. It rattles home. Kenley now with seven. 23-19. The Coppin lead cut to four. 4.40 to go. First half. Davis the handle. Now hands it off high left to Drummond. Drummond facing up. Goes line to the lane. Dumps it weak side to Davis. Kicks it back out to Auslander. Auslander. At the left elbow, finds Council, head of the key for three, glass rim, no good. Rebound Davis Jr. on the sprint back, head of the key. Finds Cameron, left side, got pinned in a double team. Oh, he traveled, he was dragging his pivot foot the whole time, and then throws it into the fifth row. Did I miss something there? <laughs> he knew he was traveling, so he just threw the ball. I think everyone in here saw the travel except those who should have seen it. Now they were baby steps, but he was traveling. Oh, no, he traveled for sure. So now Drummond's got it coming left to right. Head of the key now with Hardwick back in there. He'll turn right, and what do we got? A moving screen again. Brownlee picks up his third. Trey, Trey, let's go. Trey Thomas will check in for the first time. He has that look, DC, of, I got it. I hope he does. 4.06 to go, opening half. 23-19, copping by four. Top side of the right to Kenley. Kenley on the bounce, right of the lane, trying to back it out. Drummond deflected it away with 3.55 to go. 19 to shoot. It's a little bit of uh, talk between over there with uh, Drummond and Kenley, too. And Davis. And indeed, Juan Dixon pulls his guys in and said, keep your wits about you. Same thing with Kenley being told by one of the assistants. Hey, we know it's a rivalry. Yep, keep your wits calm. about you. Stay we need calm. everybody. 3.55 to go opening half. It's now Coppin State 23, Morgan State 19. Back after a timeout of the Coppin State Sports Network. Courts out of the PEC, your Coppin State University, Baltimore, Maryland, Tom Barley, along with the 
AD here at Coppin State, Garrett Carter. 9-4 turnover margin, Coppin State, so they got to clean that up. Yeah, you're right. We need to clean that up. That those are the type of things that late in the second half, a turnover can, can, can really be damaging to you. So, 23-19, Coppin leading Morgan, 3.55 to go opening half. Interesting to see Drum, Drummond defending Kenley. Inbound comes to Davis Jr. Near side up to Cameron. Kicks it back out to Davis Jr. Thought about a three. Goes right side out of Cameron. Cameron, a 15-footer on the way. Run to the rim, no good. Battle for the rebound and a foul against Coppin State. It's on Hardwick. That's his second. Coppin with their... Ninth team foul, Morgan with six. It comes with 3.46 to go in the half. First free throw attempt is on the way. Front of the rim, no good. Out of the hand to Sykes. Rebound to Coppin State. Here comes Karan Davis with the handle. He's defended by Cameron. Davis around the Thomas screen, head of the key. Trey on the catch, head of the key. Coming to his left, picked it up after a dribble. Right corner feed now for Hardwick. Back head of the key to Davis. 12 to shoot. Davis, Council Jr., set the screen. Karan wants a fadeaway jumper, right of the rim, no good. McCray pace with it, trying to go to the baseline. Reverse, goes up, wave it off. He stepped along the baseline, out of bounds. So now David Syfax checks back in. He'll replace McCray pace in the Morgan State lineup. So now to Quayne Drummond from the baseline to inbound. Gets it in and out of Thomas. Thomas to the head of the key. Line to the lane, and it's going the other way on a Trey Thomas offensive foul. If you're going to stick that arm out, you cannot be that obvious about it. Oslander to the table. He will replace Jordan Hardwick. Exiting two fouls and scoreless. Only bench points in this game either way. McCray pace with two. Closing in on three minutes to go, opening half. Cameron with it. Top side of the right. Kenley skips it near left corner. A three ball on the way. Left of the rim, no good. Out of the hand of Davis Jr. Drummond on the run back. Top side left. Goes opposite the council screen. Lined in a lane. Lost it on the way by. And it is last touch by Coppin State out of bounds. Morgan State makes a change. Antonio Gillespie will check in for the first time. Lamar Morgan coming back seven points, two fouls with 2.47 to go. He's got to play headsy here, D.C. He, de he definitely does. I, I believe Coach Dixon is, is, is subbing him, trying to finish up strong for this half. We've got to be careful. He wants him for scoring. Yeah. Exactly our point. Yeah. Far side of the right, pull up. Ribbon off for Cameron. Oslander the rebound. Now for Davis. Davis coming left to right. Goes left of that council screen. Picks up the bounce. Now left side Oslander. Oslander looking at Morgan left corner. Now he'll run the baseline. Oslander picks it up with 15 to shoot. Now back to Davis. Top side left. Davis clears out that left side, comes back to his right, protects the ball. Line to the lane, lost it on the way by. No. It is last touch by Morgan with six to shoot. Davis from the baseline to inbound. He looks. Bounce comes in to Sandra Council. He was fouled by Syfax trying to go to his left. It's two on Syfax. So that's the seventh Morgan team foul, I believe, D.C., one and the bonus. It is. Council didn't realize he had the back door cut so obvious for him, and he took it a little late, but he did get fouled on the play. Is that that opportunity where he has his back to the baseline, takes that hard first step, and then cuts directly yeah, back to the yeah. basket? Yeah, all he had to do was cut, but I he didn't realize it till late. Said coaches on that free throw off the front iron. Over the iron and good. Makes it 24 19, Coppin State. Second one, rim, it popped off. 
So a five-point Coppet State lead at 24-19, under two to go in the half. Head of the key, Cameron. Left corner kick out now to Gillespie. Back to Cameron. Face up left side. It's good. Martez Cameron now with four. 24-21. Coppin by three. 145 to go. Davis in the forecourt. Lobbing high left to Council. Swings it off between the rings now to Morgan. Morgan coming left. Stops out of the key. Reverse it with 90 seconds to go. 10 to shoot. Davis got bumped off. McCray pace his second. Little forearm shimmy into the left kidney. But that was a great example of if you space the floor properly, the, you can drive the lane. And that's exactly what Kawan did. So now two free throws coming for Karan Davis. First one is on the way. Back of the rim, no good. He'll have another. Substitution. Davis Jr. replaces McCray Pace. Exiting two points, two fouls. Second Davis attempt. Good. Davis now with 11. 25-21. Coppin State leads Morgan State by four. 80 seconds and counting here in the opening half. Top side left. Sykes with it. Now between the rings. Kenley facing up. Your side left. Gave it up to Cameron from 15. Good again. Cameron now with six. 25-23. Coppin State closing in on the final minute of the opening half. Davis, top side right, comes back to his left, line, lane, dumps it off, weak side of the right to Council Jr., hooks it up with the right hand, rim it off, rebound Kenley. So now Morgan with a three can take their first lead of the day, and Davis bumps him off. First on Karan, Coppin now over the limit, and it puts Kenley line left from our radio broadcast position. Special halftime guest coming up. First one's on the way, front of the rim, no good. Wow, that was... Everybody collapsed for a rebound, and they may have to put time back on here. That was an ugly free throw for someone averaging almost 30 points a game. I think it slipped out of his hand. He's even laughing at it. Yes, wipe the bottom of the sneakers. <laughs> They'll keep it at 48.8, now 49.1. Kenley's second attempt. It's on the way, rim, it trickles off. Oh, Offensive rebound and follow oh. is good by Davis Jr. Give him eight, and we are deadlocked at 25. That cannot happen. You have to block out on the free throws. Make it a 23-11 Morgan State run to tie this game at 25. Cedric Council Jr., the handle, gave it up to Morgan, and we're going the other way on a moving screen. Said with his first shot clock turned off game clock at 26 and Morgan State can hold for one and a potential first lead of the day that brings Hardwick to the table he will replace Auslander Inbounder will be Kenley. I'd be keeping an eye on him here late in half. Inbound comes to Cameron. He and Kenley exchange a glance. Cameron coming left. Kenley now calls the ball. Your side left. Now he wants a screen. 14, 13, 12. Kenley on the catch. Left of the jump circle right in front of us. 9, 8, 7. Drummond defensively on Kenley who slipped down. Gave it up to Cameron right side with two. Down to one. Let's it fly from three. Rim it off. Rebound to Morgan. And the first half concludes with Coppin and Morgan deadlocked at 25. 
Wow. <laughs> you mentioned Drummond accepting the challenge, defending the senior, and he caused the senior on a crossover dribble to stumble. Exactly. And, you know, I've been so impressed with the fact that Drummond has stepped up and taken this challenge. Uh, you know, eventually he's going to get the senior a little frustrated because the senior is used to scoring a lot of points. Now, of course, the second half we're going to have to see going to have to see see what happens but um, so far we're good that is Derek Carter athletic director here at Coppin State our halftime guest joins us after a two minute timeout on the Coppin State Sports Network That court's out of the PEC here at Coppin State University. At the break, Coppin State and Morgan State deadlocked at 25. We'll, we'll get to the sounds of the game here in just a moment, but I would like to bring on a very special guest who is the uh, proprietor <laughs> of the flagship station here in Baltimore. Uh, little did we know, my friend, that uh, a year ago when we started to ask questions about, well, would you like things done on your live video stream, your live audio stream, that not even a year later we would be on uh, the Baltimore Sports Station that uh, Mark Messina used to be on years and years and years ago. And the I'm founder glad of WNSD, yeah, Mark I'm, I'm, I'm glad you didn't hold that against me. Nah, man, come on. Moose and I are still Facebook but I'm a little upset that he doesn't call me when, like, Poison plays in Hershey or something like that. But uh, we had great times, and, hey, his brother might be going to the Hall of Fame here. And uh, I saw that weekend, you, we, we got the Ray Lewis bus trip that we're running. That's August 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. The Hall of Fame this year, baseball, is uh, July 27th to the 30th in Cooperstown. And I know there's you know, a lot of people here hanging on, whether he's going to, I mean, I'm funny about the Hall of Fame because, to me, you either are or you are not. For me, him and Schilling have always been Hall of Famers, and they should be. And, you know, the fact that they make people wait and all that, uh, I don't I don't understand that. But that's, that's my question. Why is it taking him so long in the era that he played in, in the AL East, with not even a hint? The 20 wins thing is an issue for him. The winning a championship in New York, I guess, is an issue for him. This stupid 300 win thing that... We don't even take wins seriously as baseball fans now. Like, as a statistic, if you quote somebody's wins, most people give you the stink eye. You know, like, I still do it because I'm an old fart, but um, in, in general, you know, 300 wins has been this number that I don't think will ever be the number again moving forward. There's no way. In this, in the 2000s going forward, they're going to be lucky to get to 100. 
if you look at the Pedro Martinez's and you know the guys that were dominant, dominant pitchers that did not get the 300 wins, and then you looked at the, you know the Bly Levens and the Suttons and these guys that took forever to get in because of the 20 win thing, or they were thought to be in the Hall of Very Good and not in the Hall of Fame. You know, for me, I, I watched Messina's career unfold, and you know of my relationship with him. We're the same age, uh, and, and watching him do what he does. He's a Hall of Famer, so I know that's your part of the world. We're copping tonight. we got the mayor here. This has been an unbelievable experience today, copping Morgan to be over here today. There's a lot of energy here. And, of course, when Copper wins the girls' game to begin with, uh, puts a little more pressure on the men here. Well, I, I have to ask you as D.C. now rejoins us. D.C., i got to ask you. Last year we put one piece of the puzzle together with the live stream and then marrying it to the video. And then this cat comes knocking on the door and says, hey, I got an idea too. How about we marry it to local radio on uh, Baltimore Sports Station? How easy of a decision was that for you? you can you say no-brainer? <laughs> it really was. Well, then he had to realize he was dealing with me. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great partnership. Um, you know, and, and, and it's the vision that we have is to really expand what we're doing. And, and, and get better and, and, and send our message to as many people as we can. And a day like today, Nest, is, is huge, as you mentioned. I mean, the mayor's here. We talked about her connection to the other school in this rivalry, of course. But this is a big thing. You mentioned the energy, packed house, and then we got to go to their place in February. Sure. You know, I'll, I'll brag on you right now because I think a lot of folks, even our listeners, have never been over here, uh, you know, my wife had never been to this facility, and I, I remember coming to the old games with Fang back in the day, and I had not stepped in here until I came over about a year ago to do business with you guys, and to be here on a day like this when it's packed. I said to my wife this morning, she said, oh, we're going to go over and swallow you know, basketball, and she's been to UMBC, been to Towson, you know, been to Maryland, sometimes on the road we go place where, and I, she said, what are we going to expect over there? And I said, I think it's going to be crazy over here, and it, it really, this is a lot of great energy here. It it's, is. It it's is. a wonderful afternoon to come over here and watch hoops. I, I, well, first of all, we're, we're proud of our facility. We're proud of, of, of the show that we put on, trying to get better in terms of making the event something that even your casual sports fans sure. will, will come and, and, and want to enjoy it. But listen, we, you know, the kids are involved with halftime. We have a great uh, high school band who's offering us that, that pep squad. That pep band type of atmosphere. It sounds like New Orleans. What? With, with the tubas and whatnot. I mean, it, right. it sounds like a little but, bit like a, what do they call that march in New Orleans? Or, uh, anytime uh, you can sound like New Orleans, you do First line. Yeah, what do they call first line? First line, second line. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I, I like to hear that you say it sounds like one of my favorite cities to visit anyway. So. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, I'm releasing my book that I've, uh, five years ago today, the Ravens beat the Patriots to go to the Super Bowl. Is that so right? Five years, five years, years today. Today. So you can't think of New Orleans without thinking of the no, Super Bowl. Because no, that sound of that tuba and that yeah. music down yeah. there, that's yeah. what it's all about. So yeah. everybody's got good memories on that. But, uh, yeah. but it's a beautiful day, and we really appreciate your partnership. And, uh, you know, we've worked long and hard. 20 years now this summer we've been doing this. Mm -hmm. to, to partner with local people, that's yeah. That's why we're in business, yeah. why we, we do what we do. No, and you even got Digital Williams over here, my, my boxing expert, <laughs> right, man. you got right. all family in Oh, yeah, he's the boxer. <laughs> hey, he is the expert, for sure, for sure. You know, Wilson said to me, you know, Digital, I said, I've been doing my radio for 20 years, man. Anytime Pacquiao fights or, uh, you know, uh, 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 De La Hoya or any of those guys, he, he was my guy, yeah. always. Yeah, no, he's the expert. He's the expert. The voice of Coppin State. No, I, I got to give you, you're welcome. Because uh, if it's not for the team that I used to root for till they moved back in 99, well, Cleveland kept the name. They kept the tradition. Apparently, that's all we've had after the 0-16 season. They didn't keep the tradition. The tradition was winning when they were in Cleveland. Now it's losing. Hey, congratulations. Good to see you guys. Is. Thanks for everything. We Thank do appreciate you. the partnership. Oh, man, they're bringing box lunches. Look out, man. You no, know, I, I can't eat with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quick 30-second timeout. Come back with more of the halftime show here on the Cobb State Sports Network.
for that court side in a packed halftime show, deadlocked at 25. Joined by top of state assistant coach Phil Gattano. We'll talk about the NEC later when you graduate from Sacred Heart in 2014. <laughs> but this start tonight, 14-2, was a great start. The finish to the first half was not what you were looking for at all. No, we, uh, you know, we got out to a good start. We were taking care of the ball, getting stops. I think the defensive end continued for the majority of the half. We just turned the ball over too much. I think they took 34 shots to our 20 or 32 to our 22. We had 12 turnovers. Um, you know, hard to hard to maintain a lead. Another team has 10 more shots than you do. Kenley's got seven in the opening half. Came into today averaging nearly 30. How about the job that Drummond primarily has done on the senior? Yeah, no, Tay's a great individual defender. Obviously, we, you know, he's a big part of the game plan, and the other guys off the ball have done a great job of really providing Tay with help, talking to him. Um, he's a great player. We're just trying to make it tough on him. Um, Going to continue to do the same this half, and hopefully he keeps missing some shots. So other than cutting down on the turnovers, controlling the glass, he's the second half. Other than those two, I think we just, you know, got to defend away from the bench, which is, you know, a little bit harder. The guys got to communicate and talk. We got to be physical and, and be ready for a battle. I, I love how, how the first half went. I know there was a decent amount of fouls called, but it was physical. That's how basketball should be. Um, and I think we got to find a way to get a little more movement on offense. Defense, we were good. We got to get a little more body movement, a little more ball movement, and hopefully get some open shots. Appreciate the time. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. There it is, Coach Catano. Here on the Cabo State Sports Network, back to the studio for the sound of the first half on the Cabo State Sports Network. That court shot of the PEC here at Coppin State University. Top Hardly rejoined by the athletic director and men's basketball analyst, Derek Carter. So, D.C., 11-32 for Morgan in the opening half. 1-9 of nine from 3. Coppin finishes 10-22, 2-8 of 2 of from 3. 2-5 of at the line for Morgan State. 3-6 of six at the line for Coppin State. Two biggest numbers in this game. Plus 4 Coppin on the rebound margin. However, minus 7 on the turnover. The turnover, yeah. So it's a net negative three. Yeah, and that and that's the difference. You know, when we started off with the big lead, the turnovers is what hurt us and, and allowed them to close the gap. So we're starting basically with zeros on the clock, right? Yes. So two oh. huge runs. 14-2 to start. Morgan answers 23-11. Deadlock to 25. We start over again. We start over again. Zero, zero. Let's go. Uh, by the way, the guy we were talking about, at the outset of that halftime interview in Mike Vicina. He's coaching high school boys basketball, and they got a win last night. Did they really? A convincing win at that Good. against the backyard rival. They held a kid, you talk about the 30-point plateau? Uh-huh. They held a kid who had 30 in his prior game to, like, six. So now today, you've seen Drummond hold Kenley to seven in the opening half, knock on wood. No, we're knocking on wood pretty hard, because... 
you know he's not happy with his point production during the first half. So he's going to come out firing. So we're going to have to be ready. Well, and he has the seven points on three of ten. Yeah. By the way, for the folks watching on the live video stream, Cedric Council Jr. has changed jerseys. He'll now wear number 33. Because the number five jersey was ripped. I like the look, DC. I really did. I like the torn jersey look. <laughs> Apparently the officials well, said he had to change it. Yeah. It looked a little rough and like he's been in combat. The officials are trying to keep the game calm, so... You don't want a torn jersey. Line lane. Kenley lost it on the way through into the lane. Davis coming back the other way for Coppin State. Now, on a TV side, it's the right side of your screen. For radio, they're going right to left. And we have a whistle and a foul and a catch by Morgan. And who is this going to be assessed on? So number three, Sykes. So that's his second. Richmond, Virginia product. Now, I want to go back to that matchup. Kenley from Harlem, New York against Drummond of Newport News. So you got Tidewater in the house against Harlem, New York. And freshman versus senior. Andrews Fulton on a tough catch far side right. Deflected by Morgan State. Out of bounds. 19 to shoot. Do people really understand when they watch and they listen that the kids really take it upon themselves. They're representing their hometown in these kind of matchups. Oh, absolutely. 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 You, when you grow up somewhere and, and that's where all your friends are, you definitely want to represent your hometown and, and, and put it on the map. Davis, head of the key, three, rimming off, tap oh, look up, at that. good and a look foul. Andrews Fulton buries it on a tip, drop, follow, and Carr picks up his third. Great hustle by Andrews Fulton, and, and you know he just tried to keep the ball alive. And sometimes you get lucky, just keeping the ball alive. He hit it up, and it actually went in the basket. Philly to be heard from. Rim, oh, high off the back oh, iron. It's Good. His, it's his day, isn't it? That He's, rim is very friendly to him today. 28-25, Coppin regains the lead. Top side of the right, a catch now for Carr. Carr turns around, glass, no good, tapped out. How is that out over the back? And it will be. Sykes over the back, picks up his third. Check it, it's his fourth. Sykes immediately back in the game. So that's a 6'9 senior out of Brooklyn, New York, checking out of the game for Morgan State. That's a lot of length that we were able to get off the floor. But he, he certainly did go over the back. I don't think the official was going to call it at first. So here comes Davis right to left. Coppin back on top by three at 28-25. Bounce it, far side of the right, now to Morgan behind the arc. Lob it, right of the lane, Andrews Fulton. Oh, Back to the head of the key, Morgan wants a three. Front iron, no good, Andrews Fulton trying to knock it free. It's Sykes with the rebound. Outlet now to Davis Jr. Line, lane, scoops it over the right hand. Back of the rim, no good, and how about that rebound by Taquan Drummond. Drummond uses the Andrews Fulton screen at the time stripe. Kenley goes over the top of the screen. Andrews Fulton on the catch. Ball screen handoff to Davis. 15 to shoot. Davis. Left side of the lane now to Council Jr. Back to Davis. 10 to shoot. Davis coming left out of the double team. Down to the doorstep. Spin move right to left. Andrews Fulton. Glass no good. Loose ball tapped out. Morgan runs it down into the lane. Jumps up in the lane. Draws contact. Glass no good as he ends up spilled on the deck. Up the left side of the floor. Running in the lane is Kenley. Blocking foul. Count it. And a free throw coming. Kenley now with nine. And the foul's on Drummond. That's his first. Kids played almost 22 minutes without picking up a foul. And, and playing hard, too. So that, that's good. You know, Morgan took a tough shot and, and fell, and he was out of position. So consequently, Morgan goes down and has numbers on us, has an advantage with the numbers. Kenley puts it on the way, rim it off. Tap follow by Syfax oh, as no one boxed him out. And now Morgan State has a 29-28 lead, their first of the game. That's an unconventional four-point play. So here comes Davis. Lobs it near side to Council Jr. 
Trying to go left of the lane. Hands it off to Morgan. Morgan picks it up near the baseline. Coming back to his right. Ten to shoot. At the right elbow, he lost the handle. Cameron, an outlet now for Ken Lee. Glass rim, no, but a whistle and a foul. Fouls on Davis. That's his second. And a timeout, Coppin State. That comes with 17.29 to go, second half. It's now Morgan State 29, Coppin State 28. Back after a 60-second timeout on the Coppin State Sports Network. Top of the long side, Derek Carter here at Coppin State. 27-14, Morgan State run after they trailed 14-2. Gives them a 29-28 lead. I got to give you kudos and Ruff and Bell kudos. This, this high school pep band you guys have up to our right, they are doing a job today. They are. They And you know what? They enjoy being here. They, you know, they're wearing their Coppin Eagle t-shirts, and they're having a ball up there. So We're thankful for them. I, I don't know. Yeah. I got to tell you, DC, they, they may be giving the regulars a run for their money. Well, come them together, see what happens. Competitions right? and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Kenley knocks down that free throw. Give him 10. 30 28. Morgan State. Second Kenley free throw. Lift the rim and off. Rebound to Drummond. Keep it a two-point Morgan State lead at 30-28, 17-25 to go. Davis coming across the time stripe now to the forecourt. Left of the jump circle. Swings it left side. Morgan, a three ball on the way. Rim halfway down and out. And on the rebound attempt, a whistle and a foul. That foul is on Syfax. I believe, D.C., that's going to be his third. It is. Comes at 17.09 to go here yeah. in the second half. Yeah, we want to, um, you know, we, we ran, executed the play the way that Coach Dixon wanted. I think I think Morgan has to square up on his shot. Sometimes his, his shoulders aren't square. Davis to Andrews Fulton. Back to Davis. Davis left to the lane. Swings to the right side. Now to Drummond. Drummond lost it off his knee. Pops out right side to Council Jr. Now to Davis. Euro step in the lane. Dumps it down to Andrews Fulton. Powers it up through three defenders and scores. Good play. Ties the game at 30. 16.45 to go. Shot comes rimming off to Morgan State. Bounce it off line to the lane. Kenley's runner. Rimming good. He's got 12. 32-30, Morgan State back on top. Three and a half minutes gone, second half. Right side, Morgan. Now for Drummond. Far side right to Morgan. Morgan looking for Council Jr. He's being defended by Syfax. Catches far block extended, trying to face up on Syfax. 12 to shoot, off the ball, a whistle, and what? Fouls on Davis Jr., that's his first. And the inbound will come to our left. I believe is where he pointed. That's what he's saying. The lead official is saying it's coming this side. Offensively, the, the flow of the offense is not as smooth as it was during the first early in the game. I'm not sure if we want to credit Morgan or look at us. Drummond on the inbound gets it into Davis. Davis near the time stripe in the forecourt, left of the jump circle. 
Goes right to the Drummond screen. Comes back to the left. Picks up the bounce. Now Drummond pops out ahead of the key. Ten to shoot. Launches a three. It's on the way. Rim. Glass. Good. Drummond's first field goal. And Coppin retakes the lead at 33-32. 15.55 to go. Left side handle. Cameron. Right side. A three ball on the way. Rim and off for Kenley. And over the back with the rebound foul, if you will is Davis Jr. That's his second. It brings us to the under-16 media timeout. 15.46 to go in regulation. Coppin State beats Morgan State, 33-32. Back after this timeout on the Coppin State Sports Network. Fifteen forty-six to go. Thirty-three, thirty-two. Coppin State leading Morgan State here at the PEC in Baltimore. Save the date. I'm going to give you two of them. Saturday, January twenty-seventh. Coppin will host South Carolina State at two and four. Then that Monday, January 29th, Maryland Eastern Shore is here at five thirty and seven thirty. Def definitely in, in the heart of our conference schedule now. If you're not here today, you're missing a great one. Offensive foul on Drummond as he used the forearm to clear some space. Comes with 15.38 to go. Kemley will inbound from the far sideline from our vantage point. Bounce it in now for Cameron. Cameron wants a screen head of the key. Goes left side now into the hands of Sykes. And that's going to be an offensive foul. He's guilty of the same thing. Kenley with his first. Now remember back in that opening half, it was Carr on the foul and not Kenley. That comes with 15.26 to go. Oslander's back in out of the media timeout. Drummond's got the handle. He'll run the show for a moment here. Coming left side behind the arc. Now back between the rings. Andrews Fulton on the catch. 15 to shoot. Down on the doorstep. Glass and good. Good movement off the ball by Davis and a great look. 35. By Andrews Fulton. 34. Andrews Fulton. Left side answer, and that's going to be good. A long two by Cameron gives him eight. Cameron's made some clutch shots for them today. Makes it 35-34, Coppin, 14-35 to go. Second half. Davis head of the key. Bouncing weeks out of the right. Morgan's got it. Back to Davis. Top side left, Drummond. Left corner, Oslander coming to his right. Line to the lane, stops, bounce it, weeks out of the right to Drummond. Fade away with six on the shot clock, comes rimming off. Andrews Fulton battles for another rebound, finds Morgan stepping in from three, head of the key, back of the rim, no good. Rebound, Syfax. Nearly six minutes into the second half, it's Kenley turning right, line to the lane, fights one up and good. Kenley now with 14. 36-35, Morgan back on top on the fourth lead change. Right side, Drummond, lob it off to Andrews Fulton, head of the key. Fakes the hand off to Drummond, goes right to the lane to the doorstep, wave everything off, he was fouled. Hey, 
as the season has progressed, Andrews Fulton has become way more comfortable with putting the ball on the floor and is helping us offensively in our half-court execution. Cameron, his second. It's the eighth Morgan team foul. It comes with 13.47 to go second half. Coppin with three team fouls at that same time stamp. Andrews Fulton all by himself to free throw line. Free throws on the way. It's good. Got them both, 37-36, Coppin State. So give him 11 in this game. Top side, right side, Fax. Kick it out, right corner. Coming right to left is Davis Jr. Got pinned in a triple defense. team. Reversed it off left side. Side Fax wants a three, and it's on the way and good. 39 37. Morgan State back on top and a whistle and what? Third personal assessed on Davis Jr. So at 39 37. They are going to the monitor to check the foul on Davis Jr. to see, I believe, if it is a flagrant foul. He's going to re-rack this one more this time. Close. And they're double-checking the contact. So now we're going to get a second look at the replay. And DC, I believe what they're reviewing is contact to the upper body. Contact above the neck. And his, his arm went across his face. Now they just have to determine was it accidental or it's, it's going to be close. That's been reviewed. You'll be able to tell by Coach Bozeman's reaction. Well, I can tell by Davis Jr.'s reaction too. He, he's not real happy with this call. Yeah. So I believe it's a flagrant foul. A flagrant one, which as you mentioned, DC, was the contact above the shoulders. Yeah, that could have gone either way. But he definitely made contact. But it was a little inadvertent at the same time. And again, the official looked at it wanted to make sure he saw what got a second opinion and and again when he asked the question it was what did you see mm -hmm. it was not well did you see this sure. it was what did you see davis knocks down the free throw give him 15 in this game that free throw makes it 39 38. morgan with the lead and Davis had a notion on that second one to give everybody a little extra skip in the heartbeat. Knocks it down and ties the game at 39. So Davis got the third free throw. And I believe it's... An additional foul on Davis on the flagrant, is it not? Being it's a flagrant one. Because this is now going to be the fourth free throw attempt for Karan Davis. 
and I was expecting at some point for Coach Bozeman to react. That's what he's asking for, the clarification. Mm -hmm. So you've got the two-shot foul, I believe, on the original contact. Yeah, it currently stands 40-39 Coppin, and I believe they're, they're going to sort this out because Davis may have taken an extra free throw. <laughs> and on the ninth, he wasn't shooting, so it would be one in the bonus, maybe. And it's, this is going to be interesting to see how they resolve. Yeah, because the, resolve the, this. the flagrant one, he took the two free throws. That's been done, right. and he made both. And now both teams will assemble in front of their but benches. Correct me. I saw him make three free throws, correct? And he was winding up a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that happens is two plus two. Yeah. yeah. And if they give Coppin State the basketball, well, Coach Bozeman may erupt. No, they're... They're in huddle mode now, talking it over. Yeah, because, D.C., tell me if I'm wrong. It's two, and then on the foul would be 19 foul on Morgan. He wasn't shooting one in the bonus, right? That's what I thought. But you'd bring everybody back. Yeah. Which they didn't do, and Davis made that free throw. So what do you do, bring everybody back? <laughs> for, for one. For one. For, for the final. Right. Because it should have been a total of, assuming he makes all the free throws, it should have been four free, free throws. You make your first two, the, the line is clear. The one and one, everyone should have been on the line for the one. If he makes the first, then you take the second. I hope this I'm not asking be, too this, much. This is going to be interesting to see how, how this gets resolved. If the official can explain that to us, too, I'd, I'd love to hear that. Well, he made three free throws, and they're going to wave one of them off. Scores tied at 39. We had a feeling. <laughs> and Oscillator will go all the way back to inbound the basketball. Okay. It's their game. We're just... <laughs> Here, well, spectating, well, apparently. We have possession, and we have to just take it as we have possession and keep playing. Backdoor feed to Morgan, saves it in. Drummond lined to the lane, gave it up to Andrews Fulton, who scored the right hand. Andrews Fulton now with 13, and Coppin regains the lead at 41-39. Left side pull up on the way, that's good for Cameron. Give him 10, and again the game tied at 41. Right to left comes Haran Davis. Twelve and a half to go. Oslander top side left to Drummond. Drummond coming right to the Oslander screen. Right side Davis. Davis coming to his left. Now for Drummond. Left corner kick out Oslander. Oslander after a bounce. Turns left. Fires up a three. Left of the rim and off. Rebound now for Morgan State. Your side right. Gillespie swings it off head of the key, and Kenley is armbarred by Drummond. That will be his third. With 12 minutes remaining, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, Coach Dixon keeps keeps Drummond on Kenley. They switched it. Yeah, they switched it. Kenley gave it up to Cameron, and off the ball, a whistle, and what now? This is going to be the fifth Coppin team foul. It's on Morgan. His third. That comes just ahead of the under-12 media timeout at 12.06 remaining. Drummond to the doorstep, and scoring is Kenley. Give him 16. 43-41, Morgan State pulls back in front. Davis now slowing everything down, D.C., approaches the 2-3 zone. Right side, Morgan. Oslander turns right, nearly lost the handle. Right wing behind the arc. 12 to shoot. Line, Lane kicks it out to Morgan. Catch and fire, three is on the way, good. Lamar Morgan now with 10. Coppin back on top, 44-43. 11 and a half to go. 
Penetration around the lane by Cameron. Reverse it off top side right. Gillespie back to the right corner. Three ball. Rim it rattled out on Cameron. And the long rebound will be tracked down top side left by Gillespie. He'll reset it to Cameron. Cameron. Near side right. Give it up to Sykes. Near side left kick out to Cameron. He wants that jumper. Rim it off. Tapped up. Rim. It comes off to Andrew Fulton. Over the top beat to Morgan. Morgan, right side, step in three, is on the way, good again, Lamar Morgan with 13. Big shot by Morgan. 47-43, Coppin by four, 10.45 to go. Cameron, right side to the corner. Gave it up to Gillespie, an answer triple, rim it off for Kenley. Rebound to Coppin, here comes Davis. Davis on the run back, coming right to left. Head of the key, drew some contact, kicks it out left corner, Oslander, no look feed to Morgan, another three on the way, rimming off. And under the basket, Andrews Fulton got dumped. If it's Kenley, it's his second. It's going to be Sykes with his fourth, or is it? Did he just see that player control foul? It is Sykes with his third of the Sykes. It's his third personal. So on Sykes' third foul, it puts Morgan over the limit. We believe there would be free throws forthcoming with 10.27 to go. Coppin leads Morgan, 47-43. Back after a timeout on the Coppin State Sports Network. So that court's out of the PEC here at Coppin State. Andrews Fulton goes to the free throw line. Coppin leads Morgan State 47-43. We got the clarification, D.C., on that flagrant foul situation. We did, and uh, I guess just to kind of make the explanation as simple as possible, the official admitted to an error. <laughs> they got it right. They got it right. Said no. right. Right. Second one for Chad, back of the rim, no good. So he misses two with 10.25 to go here in the second half. Left side, Cameron with the handle. Back between the rings. Penetration left of the lane. Glass rim, no good on the attempt. And Morgan State keeps possession. Right side three is on the way and good for Antonio Gillespie. 47-46, Coppin State by one, 10 minutes to go. That triple try, by the way, by Syfax a moment ago, didn't drop. Brownlee's back in out of the timeout. Oslander with it, backs it out left wing behind the arc. Now hands it off to Drummond. Drummond coming to his right. Now to Oslander. Oslander with it, coming to his left. Left of the lane, runner. Glass no good. Loose ball tapped out right side, Morgan. Morgan runs right of the lane, into the lane, fights it up. Glass, good. I think he traveled. Oh, shot clock violation is the call. Morgan saying go to the monitor. Andrews Fulton checks out. Cedric Council Jr. back in. No review on that one. I was blocked off on it. I couldn't couldn't really see whether the ball hit the rim or not. Hand off to Kenley, head of the key to the doorstep. Syfax will ram it home. And Morgan State back on top, 48-47. 
Coppin had a defensive lapse on that possession. Syfax now with seven. Oslander, run of the lane to Council Jr. Now to Oslander. Curls in the lane, jump stop, left elbow, and he traveled. Oslander saying he came to a jump stop, and the official says, nope, he traveled. And I think I learned I lean toward the official side on that. So now Drummond checks out. Davis checks back in for Coppin State. Morgan with a 48-47 lead, less than nine minutes to go. And off the ball on the Syfax catch, we have a whistle and a foul. It's on Brownlee. That's his fourth. So 22 seconds remain on the shot clock. Cameron to inbound from the baseline with 8.51 to go. Morgan stayed up by one. Bounce it in high right now to Kenley. Kenley jumps up in the lane, fights it up and scores. Kenley now with 18. 50-47, Morgan State. Chad Andrews Fulton heads to the scorer's table. Morgan's in the 2-3 zone. Brownlee right side, now to Davis, head of the key. Davis, top side left. Morgan thought about a three, now back to Davis. Head of the key, three is on the way. Ran halfway down and lift off. Rebound to Syfax. It's now Cameron across the time stripe into the forecourt. Swings in your side left, into the hands of Gillespie. Gillespie back out of the key down to Kenley. Kenley, a step back three is on the way, rim, it rattled out. Davis the rebound as we approach eight minutes to go. Juan Dixon says DC, spread the floor. Bounce it right side, Oslander wants a three, rim it off. Rebound, Syfax, bounce it off down to Cameron. That's two straight possessions against the zone. We're taking long jump shots and not really the best shots early in the shot clock. Cameron now in the jump circle as Morgan State with a 50-47 lead begins to nurse the shot clock, which is down to 10. He turns right, kicks it out right corner. Three ball right of the rim. No for Syfax. Rebound to Sed. Hands it off down to Davis. Karan on the sprint back. Top side left. Turns right at the head of the key. Trying to come back to his left, goes right side out of Brownlee. 18 to shoot, now to Davis, top side left to Morgan. Catch and fire three is on the way, good. Lamar Morgan ties the game at 50. Closing in on seven minutes to go. Cameron, top side right, corner right to Syfax. Lobs it back, head of the key now. Kenley runs in the lane, lost it on the way by. Davis up the right side, Brownlee. Right wing behind the arc, got bumped off. Blocking foul called, I believe, on Gillespie. That comes at 6.49 to go. That is indeed the call, and it brings us to the under-8 media timeout. 6.49 to go here at the PEC. Coppin and Morgan deadlocked at 50 on the Coppin State Sports Network. Court set at the PEC here at Coppin State in Baltimore. VIP floor seating with reserve parking and hospitality access still available each home game, including homecoming. And there's only days away till homecoming. You need to visit the box office or CoppinStateSports.com to get your tickets today. This is the best ticket in town today. It's a great ticket. Two great games. And the mayor's here. I mean, come on. Hey, what more can you ask for? 
that she's pulling for confidence. But I may be, you know. I don't know. She she revealed her her, her roots, so <laughs> we'll have to see. She's always welcome. You as, as a mayor and any politician, you know how they you know how they roll, right? Brownlee goes to the free throw line, knocks down the free throw, copping back on top, 51-50. Since I can't vote in the Baltimore election, I don't know. <laughs> Second one for Brownlee's good, 52-50. 11th lead change in this one to go with five ties. You want it any better? What a game. Far side left, Gillespie, Gillespie. Bounce it off head of the key. Kenley with it. Coming near side of the right to Syfax. Syfax. High right feed to Kenley. Going right toward a double team and a whistle. And what? He'll be rewarded with two free throws on the foul called on Morgan. Kenley plays in incredibly strong. And just he just, he just goes to the, to the basket with strength. Fourth foul on Lamar Morgan. Comes with 6.28 to go. Drummond at the table to check in in between. Kenley free throws. Front of the rim, no good. Comes in averaging nearly 30 a night. He's been held to 18 so far. Brownlee's checking out. He checks out with four fouls, two points. Morgan remains 16 points and four fouls. Second free throw on the way, good. Kenley now with 19, 52-51. Coppin leads, and they have the ball, 6-20 and counting, second half. Davis with it, out of the forecourt, goes right of the Andrews Fulton screen to the head of the key. Hands it off, high right now to Morgan. Morgan now to Andrews Fulton, trying to hand it back to Morgan awkwardly. Morgan a step back three, good again, Lamar Morgan with 19. 55-51, Coppin State, six to go, and we've got a clear out foul on the doorstep on a quick take by Morgan State. It's Drummond's fourth. What a shot by Morgan. It was a great... <laughs> we might have to pull the tape measure out on that one. But I tell you what Kenley did in the transition. Morgan made the shot. But well, we're kind of celebrating a, a, a three-pointer, and he's coming back down the floor. Makes the front end on the eighth Coppin team foul, so he'll be rewarded with a second free throw. Makes it 55-52 Coppin. Yeah, he's causing problems for us because he's going to the hole. He's getting fouled every time. And Back of the rim, no good. Loose ball tapped around, and it's won by Cameron. The doorstep, a scoop and score by Kenley. 55-54. Very unconventional three-point play. Comes with 5.45 and counting. Davis goes left of the screen. Left of the lane, bounces off to Andrew Fulton. Going strong, he's fouled. Davis and Andrew Fulton are really excelling in their two-man basketball game. Sykes, his fourth. Andrew Fulton. Steps in to the free throw line with Coppin on top of Morgan. 55-54, 5.38 to go. First one's on the way. Rim it off. And now Chad Andrews Fulton will try to walk it off back to the jump circle. Substitution. Tyson Rawls checks in for the first time for Morgan State, replacing Stanley Davis Jr. Second Chad free throw. That's good. Give him 14. 56-54. Coppin State. Cameron to the forecourt. Top side left now to Rawls. In between the rings to Cameron. Near side right. To Syfax. Head of the key now. Kenley. Kenley tried to go left. Got caught in a double team. Gave it up to Cameron. Cameron coming right. Head of the key to Rawls. Awkward jumper. Hit the window. No good. Kind of got caught in midair, didn't he? He did. That was good defense. So now Davis on the march, right to left. Game clock closing in on five minutes to go. Shot clock 20 and counting. Morgan State, D.C. in a 2-3 one more time. 
Davis going left into the triple team. Bounce it back to Morgan. Top side right to Oslander. Oslander, right side. Bounce it off to Andrews Fulton. Trying to ram it home and had his legs taken out from underneath him. He is going to the free throw line on the foul on Syfax, and I believe that is his fifth. So he'll foul out with 4.52 to go. Once again, Andrews Fulton taking the ball to the basket strong, and either he's going to make the basket or he's going to get fouled. Well, his flexibility was just tested right there, and he is stretching out because both legs below the knee were under yeah, he, his he, he was in a He was placed in an awkward situation. I'm glad to see that he came out of it injury-free. Rimming off on the free throw attempt. He's going to have to relax. He's going to have to really relax and, and take his time at the free throw line. Now what's interesting is he's going to the free throw line by himself so Coppin State can set up defensively with the other four. Second one's on the way. He got that one. 15 for Chad Andrews Fulton makes it a 57-54 Coppin State lead. 4.50 to go. Cameron topside left. Gives it off out of Sykes. Sykes, head of the key. Kenley on the catch. Hands it right side out of Cameron. Cameron, head of the key, ball screen handoff, back to Kenley, going left to the lane, spins back to his right, throws it up to the glass, good. Kenley now with 24, and a timeout, Morgan State. 57-56, Coppin by one. And we're back after a 30-second timeout on the Coppin State Sports Network. Four twenty-nine to go. Coppin State leads Morgan State 57-56 in the battle for Baltimore. Todd Bartley alongside the athletic director here at Coppin State, Derek Carter. Morgan's remaining in the zone. They, they're pleased with what the zone has done for them. Right side Morgan, back to Davis, head of the key. Davis coming left around the Andrews Fulton screen. Bounce it down to Sed. Sed to the doorstep, flanks it up, rim no. Andrews Fulton, Tavalalo, oh, good enough foul. He's played. <laughs> He's played hungry, you know, he just, he wants to succeed, he's taking this game personally. 59-56, and we're trying to sort out the foul. Yeah, the official book wants to know who's the foul on. Before Chad ever steps into the free throw line, we may have somebody that has fouled out, but we need to double check. It's on Sykes, his fourth. 4-11 to go. Chad Andrews Fulton rattles the rim on the free throw, so keep it a 59-56. Coppin State lead as we approach four to go. Head of the key, Cameron. Top side of the right, Ross has the handle. Back head of the key now to Kenley. Near side left, Cameron a step in, 20-footer, good. Cameron now with 12. 59-58, Coppin by one. 3.45 and counting. Davis directing traffic, now to Council, high right. Right wing behind the arc to Drummond. Drummond back to Davis. Davis uses the Fulton screen to the left. Skip pass right side is picked off by Cameron. He'll race it back left to right. Bounce it. Near block. 
Kenley a fadeaway, rim no good, battle for the rebound, and it's off a leg, saved by Cameron. They'll reset it topside left to Rouse. Hands it off now to Cameron. Cameron with 3.10 to go. Dribbles left wing behind the arc. Coming back to the right to the head of the key around the car screen. Cameron with 13 to shoot. Curls left in the lane. Faces up. Glass rim no good. And a loose ball knocked to the far corner. Picked up by Lamar Morgan. Hands it off now to Davis. D.C. were closing out on 2.45 to go. 2.45 to go and every possession is going to count at this point. Davis, left of the screen, bouncing off to Sed. Sed out of a double team. Coppin State wants a timeout, and it's granted with 2.37 to go, 11 to shoot, and we'll keep it right here. That is a huge timeout call, preserving the possession. It was, it was. I mean, Cedric Council got put in a position where he had to call it. I think Coach Dixon's going to be a little disappointed because if he could have he was double teamed if he could have made the proper pass I think we would have had a pretty good shot so now that they've extended to the media timeout we'll take a 30 second timeout on the Cobbett State Sports Network So 2.37 to go, second half, 59-58, Coppin leading Morgan. Foul situation, 18 fouls for Coppin, Morgan is already over the limit, having committed 10. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Are you looking for Morgan early from deep in the shot clock or a post-entry feed and then a kick out? You know, generally, they, they continuously have been running the high ball screen so I guess they're going to put the ball in Davis's hands and, and take it from there now I would love to see Morgan square his shoulders and hit that big three for us rebound margin plus five to Coppin State turnover margin all night long has been in the minus it's minus eight currently baseline inbound for Davis Davis looking, looking, kick out right corner. Morgan thought about a three. It got blocked out of bounds by Carr. Then he boxed Morgan out to the corner. Eight seconds remain on the shot clock. Here comes Oslander back in for Coppin State. They'll leave him there, and now do they change it out? Yes. Chad Andrews Fulton will check out with 2.34 to go. Davis is handed the basketball on the baseline. Hands it in to Council. Council Jr., far side right, six, down to five. Ball screen handoff with four to Davis. Three, down to two, let's fly. Never got there. Kenley got it before it got to the rim. He'll run it back left to right. Left of the lane, glass rim, no. Oslander the rebound. Coppin's got numbers the other way. Davis on the bounce ahead up the right side, Oslander. Run the lane, reversed it off, and threw it away. Here comes Cameron. Cameron between the rings, backs it out as we close in on two minutes to go. Bounce it off high left. Kenley with it, going right on the lane, blocking foul against Coppin State, I believe, Drummond with the foul. He will foul out with 1.59 to go. Held to three points. 24 points for Kenley tonight. He held him to 7 DC in the opening he half. He did. But 17 in the second half. We knew he would come back strong in the second half. And, and between Drummond and Lamar Morgan, they have both been trying to defend him. And, and he's creating foul situations for both of them. It's going to be interesting. I think we're going to almost have to put Morgan on him. So now Andrews holding back to the scorer's table. He'll check back in for Coppin State.
That change happens at a minute 59 to go. Ninth team foul on Coppin. Kenley now steps into the free throw line as Cameron's having a quick conversation with Coach Bozeman. So one and the bonus. Kenley at the free throw line. Puts it on the way. Rim and popped off. Oslander the rebound. Keeping a one-point cop and lead. 155 and counting. Morgan to Davis. Davis. Now to the forecourt. And again, D.C., the zone. They're staying in it. So it was up to us to figure out a way. Morgan reverse it off to Davis. 10 to shoot. Karan trying to go left of the lane. Kick it back out. Morgan at deep three right side. Glass oh, and good. Oh, Banks oh, open oh, late on Saturday night. The bank is open. 22 for Morgan. 62-58. Coppin State. Kenley ran it in the lane. Glass no good. Loose ball tapped out to the corner. We have all kind of whistles. And it was last touched, I believe, by Coppin State on the baseline with 19 to shoot for Morgan State. Chad's making an appeal to the official on that call. Is it going the other way is my question. No, it's going to be Cameron to inbound from the baseline. Cameron the inbound, top side left. Kenley on the catch. Reverse it off to Cameron. And off the ball, Kenley got held by Karan Davis. That'll be his third. 74 seconds remain in regulation. So now both teams in the double bonus. It looks like going down the stretch we're going to go with Davis. Is going to be covering Kenley. He, has, he only has three fouls. So, so Kenley at the free throw line. Eyes down the first and drains it. He's got 25. 62-59. Top and state. What a game. <laughs> Did we mention the women won 55-53? <laughs> we mentioned that. A great way to spend the Saturday afternoon. Second one's on the way. Good again. Kenley now with 26. 62-60. Coppin. Locks moving. 110 and rolling. Karan Davis the handle. He'll come across the time stripe into the forecourt. Approaches head of the key. Lob it off high right now to Andrews Fulton. Andrews Fulton turning to his right. Hands it off to Morgan. Goes to his right. Gave it up to Andrews Fulton. The floor is good. Great execution. Great execution. 64-60. Coppin State. 50 seconds to go. Kenley. Penetration left in the lane. Nearly poked away. Backs it out left wing behind the arc. 20 to shoot. Step back deep. Three on the way. Never got there. Andrews Fulton. Tried to save that ball in, going for that rebound, and Carr and Andrews Fulton battling for that rebound. It's Chad's third. Oh, I don't know about that one. Forty point five to go. It puts Carr at the free throw line. That's an unfortunate call against Andrews Fulton because he did a good job of blocking out. Just the ball came off the rim in an awkward way. Carr at the free throw line. Puts it on the way and good. That makes it 64-61 Coppin. Carr's been held to three points in this game. I tell you, Kenley just went out of the game limping. Looks like he has an injury. Second one, rim and good. Carr now with four. 64-62, Coppin, 40.5 to go. Inbound to Davis. Davis in the backcourt, defended by Cameron. Into the forecourt now. 32 seconds and counting. Now man-to-man -man is the defensive call for the Bears. I think Davis, Davis likes this. Davis comes left to the Andrews Fulton screen. Bounce it off for Council Jr. Knocked free. Morgan had it and lost it. Morgan has the ball and a timeout. Davis Jr. grabbed that loose ball and took a timeout. 18.3 to go. 
Okay, we're going to have to play defense, coach. They say it's just a turnover on top and no timeouts. Change made. Gillespie comes off, and now they're going to go to the monitor. And Corey's already ahead of him, re-racking that last play. They want to verify everything that just occurred. Did the ball go out of bounds? And was the timeout taken? Topping down to one. Morgan with two timeouts. Shot clock's turned off. 18.3 to go. Coppin leads Morgan State 64-62. Both teams in the double bonus. Rawls just ran to the scorer's table. He's checking back in. Is it any doubt in your mind who's going to get this ball? No. <laughs> And again, the reason we thought there was a timeout call, there's a massive humanity between us and that baseline. Sure, sure, sure. And then when you hear whistles, you have a sense that indeed. Yeah, I, Morgan State, you know, it's funny when we, we say Morgan and Morgan because it, it, it gets confusing. But when Morgan State gets possession, at the end of this possession, Kenley will be shooting the ball. And what he's going to do is take it to the hole and get fouled. That's been his pattern. So Morgan State has brought back Carr, Cameron, Rouse tried to check in. They'll have Kenley on the floor. He's back. I'm curious if that was a cramp that he had. I believe he was one of those times he got fouled. It looked like someone needed him in his in his in his uh, thigh, and that just hurts like I don't know what when it happens. So, you know, he'll feel it tonight. But and he's still limping. Yeah, he, he, that right he, he's a tight player. He's not going to sit on the bench for the last 18 seconds. Though they they were smart. He didn't have to play defense, but of course he put him on the floor for the offensive end. So, and indeed, it is Morgan State basketball going away from our broadcast location on radio it's left to right on TV it's right to left 64-62 Coppin by two inbounder will be Carr Sykes also joining the fray he's already positioned far corner okay, you have Davis. Davis Cameron he's met at the time strike you have Davis on Kenley bounce goes to Kenley high left Trying to go to his right. Turns right on the lane. Fights it up. Rim no good. Offensive follow is blocked from behind by Sed. And there's the foul call. It's Council Jr. second. It comes with 6.1 to go. And they fouled Philip Carr. First one's on the way, good. Carr now with five, 64-63, Coppin State. Coppin's got one timeout remaining, DC. It's gonna be interesting to see what their coach does. If and Morgan State has nobody on the blocks, nobody. Second one on the way, rim, oh my, he trickled that thing in. 64 apiece, five seconds to go. Davis runs it up the right side, headed a key, floater at the free throw line, back of the rim, no good. And we head to overtime. Another overtime. Coach Bozeman had already come down the near sideline <laughs> in front of us to congratulate Juan Dixon on the walk-off win. And he says, hey. Let's play five more minutes, huh? Let's play five more minutes. That was funny. Coach Bozeman has some funny ways about him, as does Coach Dixon. And I think they, you know, developing a, a pretty good relationship. And, you know, they understand the, the significance of the rivalry. But they both were so competitive that this is so appropriate for their first meeting that it goes into overtime. Well, Ruff and Bell just came by, tapped me on the shoulder. Let me translate. 
What is with you, my friend? <laughs> this is the third overtime you're calling in a week. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, again, look at all these people here who decided to spend their, their Saturday afternoons at Coppin State University. And they have seen the women's game a great game. And now a, another great game? What can you say? I don't know if they get the money's worth. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, I don't know if they're getting the money's worth. Hey, I, I, there might be a ticket increase <laughs> coming. Because the value of this is greater than, than what people are, are paying. So. Yeah, these so, four seats that you guys have here in the PEC, that's going to be a hot commodity. It, it, it's, it's a great, not only you have the four seats, but you have access to a hospitality area. And we're really trying to do some things to, to make this. As I said earlier, we want people to come out to Coppin State. We want people to come and enjoy. See, our, look at our students over there. And everybody isn't even back yet. Yeah. Yeah. They, we were hoping that a lot would have come in for, for the game, but you're right. Everyone's not back yet. 64 all we had to a first overtime, dare I say. We, we played two against FAMU and 79-78 was what it took. Said and Carr to jump it up. It's going to be Morgan State with Cameron into the forecourt. Top side or right, reverse it off into the key. A three ball on the way, back of the rim, no for Carr. Rebound, Andrews Fulton. Davis with the handle. And remember, we were tied at halftime. 25 all, 64 all. 25 seconds in overtime, 15 to shoot. Council on the catch. Gave it up to Oslander. Far side of the right, now to Davis. Davis with nine to shoot. Goes right of the lane, skips it left side. Oslander catching fire, high arcing three. Left of the rim and off. Andrews Fulton had that rebound, punched away. On the run back, Davis Jr. Scoops and scores with the right hand. Give him 10. 66-64, Morgan State. Nearly a minute gone by in the first overtime. Davis, hesitation, dribble left of the lane, right to the doorstep, rim no, but a whistle and a foul. Nice strong move by Davis. Able to draw the foul. That's on Sykes, and that's his fifth. Great play by Davis to get Sykes to foul out. DC, he's been held scoreless in this game, but his length at 6'8", and the presence, huge. Oh, yeah. You know, Lynch, Lynch presents problems. So now Davis steps in at the free throw line with Coppin down two, 66-64. First one's on the way, good. Karan's got 18. Pulls Coppin State within one, it's 66-65. Second one's on the way, good. Davis now with 19. Ties the game for the seventh time at 66. In between the rings, Cameron. Bounce it off high left. Ball screen action now to Kenley. Dump down inside, got knocked away from Carr. Davis again the handle, 3.45 to go. Deadlocked at 66 in overtime. Davis coming left of the jump circle. Shot clock approaching 15. Andrews Fulton sets the screen. Davis goes left of it. To the doorstep. Set. Punch oh, it down, big fella. There you go. 68-66. Eagles on top. 3.20 to go. Kenley with a carry. No call. Lost the handle. Andrews Fulton runs it back with Davis. Morgan trail on the play. Morgan will score with a right hand. He's got 24. 70. 66. Top it. Three minutes to go in overtime. In the forecourt now, Cameron Bozeman says, what are you all excited about, fellas? Settle down. <laughs> Cameron curls left in the lane. Kicks it out left corner. Kenley runs into Council Jr. Knocked him to the floor. It's an offensive foul on Kenley. Eventually, his aggressiveness is going to backfire. It's good to see Council use his head and, and take the charge. How about Kenley, man? Battling to the end, limping literally on one oh, he, leg. He's a player. He, he's definitely a player. So Staley's going to check out. They'll go small with Gillespie as a guard. 
And Coppin State will take a timeout. 2.55 to go in overtime. It's now Coppin State 70, Morgan State 66. Back in 60 seconds on the Coppin State Sports Network. Two fifty-five to go in overtime. Coppin State now leads Morgan State 70-66 after Morgan State scored the first overtime field goal. Six straight by Coppin State, DC. Yeah, at the two we're at the two fifty-five mark, so you know basically we still have three minutes to play. So it's a lot of basketball left. Four point lead is not much right now. Yeah, and down four, do both teams now stretch that shot clock down under five before taking shots? Well, you got to be careful though. When you start getting out of your rhythm and trying to trying to do things that you're not necessarily accustomed to, it, it can hurt you. So, now it's going to help us. They're lining up in the two three zone again, so we'll have the ability to allow the clock to go down. So, and how about giving 50 feet of uncontested real estate? Well, in their mind, this three minutes is a long time. And currently, 11, 12, 13 seconds of game time. Yeah. We close in on two and a half to go. Shot clock down to 10. Davis has it high left. Spins back to his right to the head of the key. Hesitation dribble right of the lane. Fade away on the way. Good for Ron Davis. 21 on the night. 72-66. Coppin State by six. 2.20 to go. Far side left down a car. Back between the rings to Cameron. Cameron to car. Runs it up. Left it short. Kenley, the offensive rebound and follow. Left to the rim and off. Set up the ladder to get the rebound. Yanks it away from everybody. Looking for an outlet. Takes a dribble. Finds Auslander. Auslander into the forecourt. Keeps the handle alive. In between the rings. Comes around the Fulton screen. And it's knocked out of bounds from behind by Morgan State. Under two minutes to go. 18 to shoot. We were lucky. We, we, we have to get the ball into Davis's hands. You tell me, is he limping or not? You know what, I think he's limping, but it's also because it's overtime. Just, he's tired, he's playing hard. Oslander on the inbound, looking. He turns the official and calls timeout. We'll keep it here with a minute 59 to go in overtime. Shot clock at 18. Out of this 30-second timeout, Morgan has a two in the OT. Council has a two in the OT. Davis has four in the OT. Andrews Fulton has been eerily quiet. But that's okay. From a scoring standpoint. Right, right, right. From a scoring standpoint. You know, the game has a, a, a different flow in overtime, but he's still doing the little things on the offensive end, and we probably will hear from him before this game is over. Something about the FAMU game in overtime. <laughs> Double overtime. Yeah, yeah. He's been too active this entire game to disappear. Now he'll 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 come he'll come to the forefront. So the inbound will be in front of the Coppin State bench. It's two hour left. Of course, on TV, it's the right of your screen. Oslander to inbound. Looks, bounce it into Davis. Davis gives it up to Andrews Fulton. Ball screen handoff back to Davis coming right. Line, lane, fights it up. Glass, no. Andrews Fulton went for the rebound. I believe he was fouled. Yes, he by was. By Carr. That's his spin. Yes, he was. He'll foul out with 151 to go in overtime. Once again, like we said, Andrews Fulton now. He has a score, but great position to get the defensive, to get the offensive rebound. Now he's at the free throw line. 
and again, all by himself. Both teams have gone to this, D.C., in this second half and out overtime. They're leaving the shooter at the free throw line, and everybody else goes back to play half-court deep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not certain, but oftentimes, you know, when you have guys in foul trouble, the coaches pull them off just so they don't make that erratic foul trying to get an offensive board or something. So it's all about getting back on defense for Coppin at this point. Second one good again. Fulton now with 21. 74-66 Toppin. Eagles on an 8-0 run after Morgan State scored the first overtime basket. Line, lane, a kick out by Davis Jr. Right side pull up, rim it off for Cameron. Rebound, Coppin had it and lost it. Snatched away by McCray Pace. 90 seconds to go in overtime. Baseline right, Davis Jr. is bailed out by the whistle. That foul. is on Chad Andrews Fulton, who will foul out with 21 points. You see the applause he's getting. Well deserved. Well deserved. Second Coppin State player to foul out in this game. Morgan State has three players that have fouled out. Here comes Lucian Brownlee, who has two free throws. Those coming, I believe, First half, he's playing with four fouls. 88 seconds to go in overtime. Coppin leads Morgan 74-66. Davis at the free throw line. Puts it on the way, rim it off. Coppin is out of timeouts, by the way. Morgan has three left. So in those situations on the inbound where you're out of timeouts, you better not call one. Second free throw is good. 74-67. That's the first point by Morgan State after that opening field goal in the first 15 seconds. Inbound to Morgan, tough catch. Gave it up to Oslander, up the right side. Brownlee stops in the forecourt. Gave it up to Oslander, what a tough catch he made right of the jump circle. Oslander, now to Brownlee. Brownlee brings it down all the way to the floor. Coming left toward the head of the key, 12 to shoot. Brownlee going left in the lane, fights one up, it's blocked. Loose ball on the floor, picked up now by Gillespie. Under a minute to go in overtime. Gillespie, right side, pull up on the way, it's good. Gillespie now with five. 74-69. Coppin State leads Morgan State by five. And Morgan State took time. We'll take it with them. A 30-second timeout on the Coppin State Sports Network. So out of the Morgan State overtime timeout, Coppin has a 74-69 lead with 57.3 to go. McCray Pace will defend Cedric Council Jr. Oslander from the baseline to inbound. And we have a whistle and a foul before the ball ever came in. It's on Cameron, that's his third. And he fouled an exhausted Karan Davis. That comes with 57.3 to go. Again, the foul came before time started. Big free throws here. Davis with 21, puts the front end on the way, rim it off. He winced as soon as he let it go. He did. He, did. he backed away. He just, just wasn't good. 
wasn't a good um, follow through on his part. Second one on the way, good. Okay. He's got 22, 75, 69, Coppin State. Line, Lane, Kenley, backs it out, top side right, 50 seconds to go. Now for Cameron, penetration left in the lane, off the window, no good. Rebound to Morgan. Morgan looking for an outlet. Gave it up quickly to Davis. Davis spins on Cameron, trying to bring it back across the time stripe. Into the forecourt, draws three defenders, bounce it off to Brownlee, head of the key. Brownlee backs it out toward the time stripe. Right side, Oslander. Right corner, Cedric Council oh. Jr. Back to Oslander. 12 to shoot, and he's fouled by Cameron. That's his fourth. Explain the oh, because we both saw the same thing. <laughs> I was listening to Coach Dixon. Cedric Council, if he wanted to, could have, I mean, it clear out to the basket and, and he would have brought the house down with that dunk. But maybe an exclamation point? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Oslander with 24.9 is set for free throws, and they're going back to the monitor. I think they're just verifying a license plate, if you will, <laughs> or a jersey number. This is a clear situation. We make our free throws, we win the game. And Kenley in the overtime. Well, let's just say he had seven in the first half, 19 in the second half, and leave it at that. Fans can clearly he he's playing with he's banged up, you know, and and you know, he, he's played an aggressive style of, of basketball during this game, and he's paid for it too. And as we, as we get a look at the replay, that run off the baseline was absolutely there. Oh, I mean, it, it. <laughs> because the double team came to Oslander as soon as he penetrated just inside the right side. You know, he was a little gun shy because, like, like we said, it, this place would have erupted. Uh, currently, they're just double checking the clock which currently sits at 24.9, and we may have a bit of a time correction. And with a lead of 75-69 at two possessions, it's going to be critical to make sure the time stays right. I would say, if anything, they're going to drop it down. Coach they just Dixon. ran it down to 20.6. Oh, that's great. Coach Dix is encouraging his guys to make these free, throw, free throws. Sometimes that's the toughest word to say. Is it you know what to do as opposed to make them? Take a deep breath. Rim it off. Over the front of the rim. Take your time. 1st Coach Bozeman wants to know about the clock. Dropping from 24 to 20.6. Because it went from 24.9 to 20.6. And on the whistle, keep in mind, these are digital timers on the whistle. So they went to the monitor to verify after 24.9, now it's to 26.2. Instead of 20.6. It's now 26.2. And that's exactly what the replay monitor says. 26.2 and then there was 11 on the shot clock when the foul was called. Once again, they got it right. Just took a minute to punch in the right numbers. Oslander second free throw, rim, high off the iron, and good. 76-69, Coppin State, 20 seconds to go. Scooping a score for Davis Jr., give him 13 and a timeout, Morgan State. Coppin leads Morgan State, 76-71, back in 30 on the Coppin State Sports Network.
So out of the Morgan State timeout, 76-71. Coppin State leads in overtime, 21.2 to go. And now Oslander to inbound the basketball. Council is already in the forecourt on the far side of the lane. Oslander, center of the floor, over the head of Morgan, and Morgan then commits a foul with 19.9 to go. He just fouled out. He'll exit with 24 points. 19.9 to go in overtime. 76-71, Coppin State. It's going to be interesting who he substitutes, but he's going to have to put a ball handle in. So now Coppin will bring in Keandre Fair for the first time in this game. Oh, by the way, young man, welcome to a pressure situation. They're going to reset it to 21.2 is what I believe I just heard. Free throw line and two free throws as both teams have been over the limit since late in the second half. For Morgan State and D.C., they can cut this to a three-point lead with two free throw makes here. And the first one's good by McCray Pace. Well, first thing we're going to have, to, assuming he makes the second, Coppin State has got to be able to inbound the ball. Got them both. McCray Pace now with four. 76, 73, 20 seconds to go, and a quick whistle with 19.6 as the inbound came to Karan Davis. And the second thing I was going to say is once the ball is inbounded, we have Coppin State has to make free throws. Karan on the year. Nearly 80% at the line. He's matched his season and career high of 22 at UMBC. First one's on the way, good. He's got 23. 77-73, Coppin State. He made that with Kenley talking to him the whole time. Second one's good. Davis now with 24. 78-73 Coppin. 17 seconds to go. Kenley runs left in the lane. Fights one up. Missed everything. Fair the rebound. He got bumped off. 12.3 to go. And McCray Pace, I believe, the foul. That would be his third. It is, so the long walk up the floor for Keandre Fair, and with 12.3 to go defensively for Coppin, obviously no foul, but what are you trying to do? You meet him at the time stripe, do you, do you at least token press? How about that, how about that for a big shot? He's been on the bench cold the entire game and comes in and makes a pressure free throw. Make that two. That's a big time play. 80, 73, Coppin, 10 seconds to go. Oslander steals the ball away from Davis Jr., hands it off to Davis. Under the basket with five, throws it to the forecourt, fair on the catch, that's going to do it. It is a battle of Baltimore sweep for the Eagles today. And the nightcap finishes in overtime, 80-73. Outstanding effort, outstanding performance. Great job by Coppin State coaches, players, great support in the arena. What a day. <laughs> what a day indeed. 55-53 yeah. in the women's game, in the men's game, overtime, 80-73. Eagles with the win, their second in conference. How about these numbers we were just handed? 
16-9 in overtime in favor of the Eagles. Guys stepped up. Guys stepped up the way that this gentleman coming over here right now. Ironically, Lamar Morgan defeats Morgan. So Coach Dixon will join us. So first things first that I have to ask you, Coach Dixon, do home wins always have to take overtime? I know, right? <laughs> These guys are going to give me a heart attack. That's a big win. You know, it's my first time experience, experiencing the Morgan copy, copy game. And uh, our games came out, our, our guys came out and played really, really hard. You know, we had a game plan. We got two terrific players. And we wanted a game plan around those guys. Try to make them work for every every shot. And, uh, and we did. And offensively, we made shots. I mean, Chad played great. Karan played great. Taekwon, everybody that played tonight played great. And, you know, these are the type of wins we need to build in the direction we want to go. You've mentioned defensive effort since our first conversation mm -hmm. when you took over this program. You have a man in Kenley who's averaging nearly 30 a night, and you put a freshman on him in Drummond for much of the night, and the young man took the mantle in the challenge. I love Taekwon. I mean, we want every kid in our program to be like Taekwon Drummond. There's a reason why a freshman is playing 35, 40 minutes a game, because he's mentally tough, he's physically tough, and he accepts the challenge. He made every catch tough, he made every drive, every shot was contested. And those are the type of young men we win in our program. And most importantly, Taekwon is an outstanding young man. So let's get to Lamar Morgan, who we're going to talk to here in just a second. Finishes with 24 for you. Coming down the stretch, he fouled out uh, with 19.9 to go. But these three-point field goals that he makes, it's another zip code when he lets it go. Yeah, I mean, the man got range out to the parking lot. All right, but I tell Lamar, Lamar is a special, he's a, he's a special player because he can shoot from the parking lot. And he has the ability to defend at a high level. I'm, you know, I get on Lamar in practice and shoot arounds about taking game shots, you know, taking everything really, really serious. And, um, you know, my job is to prepare these guys for something bigger than Coppin basketball. It's life. If they want to play basketball after Coppin State, you know, my job is to prepare them for it. Uh, but uh, Lamar is, is a work in progress. I mean, this kid gives me headaches every day. Uh, but I love him. I love his effort, his toughness. And he's finally starting to get a group. You know, early in the season, he wasn't making a lot of shots. Uh, but we knew he had the ability to shoot the way he is and play with this type of confidence. Finally, a shout-out to the crowd. We've got Good a three-game homestand going on, South Carolina State, a week from today, and then uh, UMES uh, on come back. Monday. Come back. You know, we win because of our fans. I understand everyone came out because it's a Morgan, Morgan Coppin game. But we're going to build something special here. Uh, but we, this is our program. The fans, the people who support Coppin. Uh, we're going to do this together, and we're going to continue to recruit young men like these guys over here, uh, and um, take it from there. Appreciate the time, as always. Appreciate Congratulations it. once right. again. Overtime win once again for the Eagles. Hey, hey and we're 2-0. Go ahead. Mike, you, go ahead. Put that back on. You can tell everybody. He said, D.C., 2-0 with you on the mic. That's the, uh, the biggest key. So you can't leave. Now let's check in with uh, Lamar Morgan as well. He finishes with 24 here today. And uh, Lamar, how special of a game is this rivalry between Coppin State and Morgan State? Uh, it's, it's definitely a big one. I mean, this is my first time in this kind of environment, and uh, it was a good one to experience for sure. We've talked about your range. Is the parking lot too, too far for you for a shot? <laughs> uh, you know, Coach Juan just instills uh, great confidence in me, and he tells me to shoot the ball when I catch it, no matter where I'm at on the court. If I'm in the half court, I mean, it's going up. Speaking of going up, you put up all these three-pointers, you knock them down, and then late in this contest, Coppin needed you more for the defensive side to stop Morgan coming down the stretch. What's the defensive, defensive presence for you like coming down that stretch in overtime? I mean, it's definitely a big one. I mean, uh, Coach always tells me, you know, he puts me on some of the best matchups we play every time in and out. So, I mean, it's a big one, definitely, for sure. All right, finally, Karan Davis also matches with a 24-point performance, a new career high for him. How steady of a hand is he leading this uh, this backcourt? Oh, man, he's a huge one. I can't even believe, like, I couldn't even tell you how much we appreciate him. I mean, he controls our offense. He gets us in motion. And he, he leads us. He's a big leader for us. So, I mean, he's definitely, I appreciate him a lot.
Appreciate the time. Congratulations on an OT win in the Battle of Baltimore. Thank you, thank you. There it is, Lamar Morgan. Big game by him tonight, 24 for the Eagles. Pepsi Post Game Show continues in two minutes on the Common State Sports Network.